many years also given this model, they will create several schools and let them look at who's going to help you get them. Okay. All right, thank you, Jane. Have a good one. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you uh, please go ahead and state and spell your name for the court? Sure. Martin Campbell, M-A-R-T-I-N-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. -L. Very good. And, sir, how are you currently <coughs> employed? I'm a sergeant with the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. All right, Sergeant Campbell, tell us how long you've worked for the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Department. For 20 years. And what is your role there today? So I'm the sergeant over the classifications unit. How long have you held that position? Since February 5th of 2022. Now the classifications division at the Gwinnett County um, Sheriff's Office, what is that? What do they do? So classifications is a process of Sure. This one? Yes. Okay. We're just a little soft spot in town in Asheville. I'm sorry. Dealing with some congestion this morning. No worries. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, so classifications is a process of gathering information uh, such as someone's height, weight, gender, uh, their race, um, using that information plus other factors to help determine where someone's going to be housed. So these are individuals who are currently, uh, who at some point are being housed at the Gwinnett County Detention Center? Yes, ma'am. Now, this information, how is it helpful to you all? So that information is helpful in identifying them um, as well as administrative reasons that, that we would need that information for housing. And is this done for every single individual who comes into the Gwinnett County Detention Center? Yes. Male or female? Male or female. Tell us a little bit about how individuals are numerically classified for purposes of identification. So when someone comes in, they're assigned a uh, specific and unique uh, ID number okay. that's only given to just them. And are those numbers uh, auto-generated? Yes, uh, they are auto-generated by the computer system that we have. Are any two individuals at the detention center given the exact same number? No. Now, when you, um, in your role as a classification, in classifications at the detention center, are you able to review the broken numbers or the identification numbers associated with the people there? Yes. So this is um, information that tells um, identifiers, uh, such as names, uh, ID numbers, booking numbers, and then as far as the physical descriptions of someone, such as the date of birth, their race, gender, height, weight, hair color, eye color. Okay, and who is uh, State's Exhibit number 24 associated with? Uh, that exhibit is uh, Miss Hall. First name is Brittany. And what about State's Exhibit number 25? This is Miss Owens. Uh, first name Celeste. And can you tell us if um, those are accurate printouts of the information that would be entered into the system? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Judge, at this time, and, and do they, is it something you printed out? Uh, this is, yes. Okay. Do those accurately reflect um, the booked-in information as you recall? Yes, ma'am. Judge, I have taken some stone bolts with me that have been done by the Chief Justice of the Circuit, and I have turned them into accurate results for you. Thank you. States 24 and 25 are admitted without objection. Thank you, Judge. I will at this time ask to publish those exhibits. Granted. Thank you, and if I may please ask the court to change the television setting. Thank you. I will be using the hard copy. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, we are looking here at state's exhibit number 
Please explain to the jury uh, what it is that States Exhibit 24 is actually indicating. So States Exhibit 24 is um, depicting the identifying information of Ms. Brittany Hall uh, to state what the, the booking number is and the ID number assigned to her, the date she was brought in, as far as physical descriptions, uh, her race, gender, height, weight, hair color, eye color, as well as her date of birth. All right. Now, unfortunately, the writing is a little bit small. We're unable to make it larger at this time. So would you mind reading out to, um, to the court what the booking number is associated with Brittany Hall? The booking number for Ms. Hall, um, can I use the paper version? Yes. Uh, it's a little bit closer, my, yes. I'm sorry. Um, so the booking number is GCSO, um, which is the initials for Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office, 21JBN, uh, which stands for jail booking number, 022547. Um, on November 22nd of 2021, uh, the weight is 295. States Exhibit 25 is the information for Ms. Owens. Um, and I'm sorry, you said just indicate the, the weight. Oh, as far as now, if you could tell me what the booking number is. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, GCSO 21 JBN 022460. Correct. Okay. Now, is there also weight associated with Ms. Hall? On November 21st of 2021, the weight um, was 231. Okay. Now, I do want to ask you, Sergeant Campbell, how is the weight actually calculated there at the uh, detention center? So we, we do use, um, when someone comes in, we do use um, information such that's obtained from someone's driver's license, um, it's, it's an approximate weight. So this information is usually provided to us from the arresting officer. Okay. And there's not, is there a scale that you verify the weight at that time? There, there is no scale. So if someone verbally gives information on their driver's license or at the time that they come in, then it's sort of like the honor system, is that right? Correct. Now, do you, are there photographs that are also taken of tattoos on an individual? There are photographs taken. Tell us about that process. So when someone comes in, um, there are photographs taken. And then at a later date, there is also photographs taken as part of the classification process. Now, are, what is, again, the purpose of um, the photographs of tattoos? Being taken? Uh, more so just to document uh, the identifying okay. information, that being the tattoo. Is it fair to say this information that you're gathering is really for the purpose of identifying individuals so that there's no confusion between people? Correct. With the information that you gather, which includes all that you've talked about, as well as the photographs of the tattoos, what is done with that information? So we upload the information. Uh, onto a secure database uh, that's for our use, uh, for uh, jail investigations use, gang investigations use. Okay. 
It's an internal database? It is. Is it a secure database? It is secure. Or what is the name of the database? Uh, it's it's a, a drive on, on the computers okay. that only certain people have permissions. And do you have permission to access that drive? I do. And are you familiar with the way that that drive works as well? Yes. Have you input information to it or uploaded information to it? Yes. And do you routinely, as part of your job, access that information also? Yes. And that information is housed and kept within that database for the purposes of the detention center only? Yes. Now, the photographs of the tattoos that you indicated, is every individual who comes into the detention center at some point are there tattoos or body markings photographed and documented? Yes. I'm going to ask you to take a look at what is listed, which is that. That's State's Exhibit Number 22, which consists of 12 figures, as well as State's Exhibit Number Stakes exhibit 22 is pictures that were taken of Miss Owens showing her tattoos. Stakes exhibit 23 is pictures of Miss Hall showing her tattoos. Admitted without objection. Any questions for Mr. Stephen Black? You may. Sergeant Campbell, I'm going to show you what uh, has been previously marked as State's Exhibit number uh, 22. Can you kind of walk us through what it is that we're seeing? We'll start with that first page and just keep going, and I'll move along with you. Okay. If you, we could, uh, that first page there with the photograph. Okay, uh, is yes. that exactly Talk us briefly through what it is that we're looking at. Uh, so this was a picture of Miss Owens uh, when she was brought in, as far as and then as long as as well as I'm sorry, um, her name, her booking number, her ID number, and the date and time. And I'm going to move along here, and and I'll just keep going if you can um, just show us. What we're looking at here. Okay. Um, so these are comparison pictures. Uh, the top picture represents the picture that was taken when she um, was brought in, and the bottom picture represents the picture that was taken when she was classified. Okay. So it's not necessarily on the same day, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Is, so these are just various different. Um, markings on the body of Celeste Owens that were photographed by the detention center. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it, it says here that's the right cheek, so there is a notification um, put on there by the individual indicating 
what part of the body that the tattoo is located on? Yes. And moving on, these are additional photographs, is that correct? Correct. So again, the top is uh, initially taken, and then there is a subsequent photograph that is taken for purposes of classification. Yes. And um, these are, as we're going through these, um, I'm looking at this photograph here that you can see on your screen as part of State's Exhibit Number 22 that also denotes that this is uh, something that is classified as a koi fish on the left forearm inside. Who comes up with what it might be? Um, sometimes um, it's asked upon for the person that's, that actually has the tattoo that, that came in um, to, to identify. To identify okay. and, and same two comparison photographs. So are females photographs taken by other females and male photographs taken by male, I guess, uh, sheriff's workers? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let me ask you as we continue through these photographs, these are all associated only with Celeste Owens, correct? Uh, yes, correct. Now, these photographs are So when we're checking someone, um, classifications is going to get into a little bit more detail than the initial pictures taken when they're first brought in. Um, we get closer uh, underneath clothing, uh, not the intimate areas, uh, but when we're checking someone, uh, we're asking them to take off their shirts and we're checking the back and the shoulders and the stomach and uh, the legs. And so if there's not a tattoo on a particular part of the body, we don't photograph it. So in this case, if there are no tattoos of Celeste Owens' legs or the back of her legs, uh, would that note to you that there were no tattoos on those parts of Celeste Owens' body? Yes. And if there were, there would have been a photograph taken and compared here? Correct. take you over to State's Exhibit number 23, and I just want to get that back in. All right, and who is this profile for? Uh, this profile is for Miss Hall. Okay. I'm sorry, this is being funny for me, so I'm going to just go back up to the top, and this is for Brittany Hall. Um, and you are able to tell that it's for Brittany Hall based again on the bookend information and number as well as the photograph? Yes, ma'am. All right, and I'm going to go through those. So these are the specific different markings um, that are found, again, in comparison on Brittany Hall. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. And so, again, as is noted here, we can see the various different parts um, that there are. Tattoos. So I'm looking specifically here uh, at the left leg, which does show uh, a tattoo there. So this would obviously mean that Brittany Hall had tattoos on her legs, right? Yes, ma'am. Whereas you indicated that Celeste Owens did not. Yes, ma'am. So these are, again, the comparison photographs of the various locations of the tattoos. that the photographs are not all taken on the same day? Typically we have more males uh, getting arrested than females and so most of our time and attention is, is given to the males. Um, they're typically larger groups and so there, there is a, a, a gap between uh, with females there is a gap between the day that they're brought in, and then the time that classification is, is able to visit them. Okay. All right, I 
think that's all the questions I have for you, Sergeant Campbell, right now. Uh, Mr. Greenwell might, so thank you. Yes, ma'am, you're welcome. Good morning. Just for thought commission purposes, as you look through the exhibits, uh, no tattoos on his arm and leg, correct? Correct. Tattoos on the calves and leg. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we redirect? No, you're not allowed to redirect. May the witness be excused. Yes, you're not allowed to redirect. All right, thank you, sir. You can step down. Thank you. Before we go with the next witness, I'm going to take a 10-minute conference break.